um, began to uh, address the last 50 years of what has transpired in the state uh, in terms of the economic conditions of the state. And still, we see more and more first-time um, young people coming out of households uh, having options to go to college. We, we're educating more young people, but at the same token, we're losing young people being involved in opening and creating their own jobs and their own business. Well, something is wrong with that. So I began to take, I began to, to take a real close look at what we've done in South Carolina over the last 30 years, having served now um, as an elected official for the last 34 years. We made great strides in being able to attract industry in the South Carolina, but we made a lot of mistakes along the way. We only looked at those large urban centers that provided all the economic packages a business um, would be able to need and to afford. And those things they could not, we provided with tax credits, of course, with additional cash. We did not pay close attention to small rural counties, and now it's come back to really hurt us. When I say hurt us, I'm, I'm meaning it. In this last census tract, we saw 22 counties lose population, but the state still grew some 600,000. Where does these people go? They left these rural communities, and a lot of, uh, a lot of these communities had small uh, pockets of families who had been in these communities for a long time. They went into large urban cities. And going into large urban cities, it created a problem. And that is a drain on the public safety, the educational system, um, the opportunity to provide not just economics, but also economic growth um, for that many folk who would transition to those, into those other economies. And looking at our historical black colleges, with the exception of Allen, Benedict, and Clinton College, the others are located in rural communities. They were left out the economic picture as it relates to corporations and businesses, including them in their forecasts, including them in development, including them in their long-term planning. So we created a strategy called the Triple I, the Institute of Innovation and Information. What is that all about? This is to reconnect our schools, our young people back to the corporate world. These seven institutes are committed to promoting access to quality training and research that will assist both students and stakeholders in being ready to meet the demands of an ever-changing world. The institutes recognize that most industries spend thousands of dollars training new hires. Thus, the relationships these institutes will tenure with the state's businesses and industries through research, internships, and other opportunities will help to produce a better prepared worker for the 21st century. An institute is different from a regular academic program in that um, it's usually a specialized field and there is more focus given to a specific discipline and specialized individuals who can help to implement the programs and services being offered by that institute. Um, an academic program is usually where you go and get a degree. Um, the institute can help support that as well, but the institute doesn't necessarily have to offer you a degree. The institute will offer webinars, seminars, workshops, and all kinds of entities to individuals other than the students on the respective campuses. However, the students on the campus is usually the main focus. Yes. Of course, we're talking about recruiting major corporations. Major corporations want to make sure you're very diverse. Uh, they want to make sure that you're sending the right message on, in the higher education community. We don't look for HBCUs only to teach and train African-American students. We want to train all students. And these institutes that are out there, South Carolina State College, for an example, Beck, the business community, small and large, the environment community, water quality, air quality, air emissions, um, global warming, all those issues are out there. Communication, such as what is being presented today, also from theater um, to all kinds of communications that's out there, and transportation a transportation center that's been there for quite some time. But as we move from gas to electric cars, somebody's got to build these fuel sta fueling stations. 
The largest problem we're going to have is where do we build fueling stations in rural communities? And that's where the HBCUs um, come in. If a company, corporation, or organization is serious about true DEI work, um, there's not a better place to recruit the talent. I, again, for me and all of our strategies of working with companies and corporations, it's a hundred percent related to uh, value proposition, right? And so if you're looking based on your mission statement, based on your strategic plan to diversify your workforce, where I can't tell you a better place to come than to our HBCUs. We have been known for producing the best talent and to be able to come in and be successful at any form of employment. And so the state of South Carolina is unique because it's eight of us, right? And when you have eight HBCUs that have unique missions, so there's no way of escaping. If I'm a company, if I'm looking for someone that has uh, uh, real specialization in computer science, computer engineering, well, you can come to Claflin University and get that. If you're looking for someone that have a different form of engineering, you go to South Carolina State and get it, right? If you're looking for someone with strong business, so all of our institutions have a unique mission that you can be able to get what you need. And I think at the collective, we're able to provide that to employers as well. Uh, SCIII is a game changer, uh, I believe, and uh, many of the other presidents of uh, uh, HBCUs here in South Carolina uh, have articulated the same thing. Um, an opportunity to uh, create the, an institute on the campus of each one of the HBCUs is a magnificent game changer. For example, here at Morris, we're focusing on uh, cybersecurity uh, and technology uh, as our institute. Um, and so the opportunity to have one of the best programs here in the state of South Carolina and arguably in, in our country where we are educating, training um, students here at Morris College with the best faculty, uh, some of the best technology, and the best laboratory equipment that money can buy because that's what the um, Institute uh, has allowed us to do with the funding. Another big part of that is that not only the institute here at, at Morris College is significant and important, but Morris will benefit from each of the other institutes at the other institutions here in South Carolina through this collaboration through SCIII. So it is a magnificent opportunity to have uh, students who are highly trained to be able to go out into industries and business and the job market uh, excellently prepared for the challenges uh, in terms of jobs, but also in leadership positions. Uh, that's important also. So we're training professionals who are leaders that will go out. And in turn, that also enhances the brand of HBCUs. So the South Carolina Institutes for Innovation and Information really provide a vehicle through which our institutions, our eight HBCUs, can collaborate in areas where we share a discipline-specific focus. For example, there are several institutions that provide engineering programs. Interesting to note that today, Benedict College learned that it was approved by ABET to be accredited in its engineering department. So we're very, very excited. We joined the pantheon of institutions that are fully accredited in engineering engineering. Uh, institutions who have that program can collaborate in the state of South Carolina because of the vehicle that's been provided to us through SCIII. Um, we also have the opportunity to showcase that which is special and unique about each of our institutions. So on the one hand, collaboration is important. But on the other hand, differentiation is also critically important. At Benedict College, our institute is BEST. We love the acronym BEST. Uh, here it stands for Business, Entrepreneurship, Science, and Technology. So our recent success in securing ABET accreditation plays right into uh, the context of our SCIII Institute. We're very excited about the possibilities to reintroduce uh, Benedict to the business community, to the scientific community, and to advance opportunities for our students in that space. The relationship that these schools will develop throughout the state will help to ensure that South Carolina remains one of the leading competitors in the nation. 
I encourage both the HBCUs and the state's businesses and industries to connect and create opportunities through seminars, webinars, summits, and other means to support each other's goals. I specifically encourage the institutes to make known the innovation program and services they offer as a means of bridging the gap among students, community, and industry leaders. The definition and the goal of social environmental justice is to develop uh, opportunities uh, for uh, individuals, uh, particularly uh, individuals that have been underrepresented uh, to really to level the playing field and specifically with our institute, uh, the Rural Community Development Institute at Voorhees University, uh, our focus is doing social and environmental justice in rural communities. So what we want to do is to be the model uh, to um, certainly show the world, show the nation uh, what can be done in a rural area like this, as, as I uh, say often, the exquisitely lovely rural Denmark, South Carolina, which needs a lot of work, uh, but, sh but sharing and partnering uh, with the city, with, the, with, of course, Bamberg County, and then with the surrounding rural counties what we focus on is trying to find ways that we level that playing field as it relates particularly to economics. Uh, so with social environmental justice, that's exactly what we do. That pipeline that we uh, th that we uh, previously spoke about will assist us in doing that systemically. So then we know, one, what the workforce needs are, and we're developing uh, our students uh, to ensure that they are prepared for the workforce. But not only our students, uh, we are uh, actually reaching out to the community because we have some programs that we actually invite uh, individuals to participate in, in our programs uh, so that they receive certificates and badges so that they are actually able to contribute to the workforce also. So again, developing that pipeline uh, um, and meshing that, uh, making that parallel to the workforce uh, from our students and from individuals in the community based on community needs. SCIII will provide opportunities in business, environmental science, technology, communication, transportation, healthcare, civility, rural development, teaching, and nursing. As a result, the academic and personal growth opportunities will expand the capabilities of our state citizens and those businesses that employ them. Well, anytime you bring diverse groups of individuals together uh, to talk about where that ma there might be nexus between their interests and yours, uh, you create an opportunity for innovative thinking. And certainly under SCIII, we have had uh, good conversations with units of government, uh, utilities, and other service providers, and certainly um, their dialogue with us uh, would have uh, given them opportunities to think about uh, workforce development and economic development in very different ways. And obviously that grows out of innovative thinking and action. We're going to have community health advocates who will go out in the community and provide education um, and get them involved in programming. We want to have a research component where we will have through our director and even faculty and staff at the college to be involved in research on public health initiatives. Um, our hope is because we have a grant with the Department of Health and Human Services uh, to address health literacy is that some of the good work that's already happening through that initiative will be merged into the work of the Wellness and Community Health Institute. And my dream is to have a School of Public Health uh, here at Clinton College. And so I think that the Watch Institute provides the foundation for that. And uh, we want to obviously use this to leverage more resources uh, to build a dynamic program that really helps to transform the outcomes for our communities. I believe the opportunity for South Carolina State University and specific for its business, environment, communication and transportation center, although we will focus here at South Carolina State on that institute, we realize that we'll be able to share what we do with other students across the sphere of our HBCUs, just like we will be able to tap into their expertise. So although each institution has its own, I'm looking forward to the collaboration where if we have a student at South Carolina State University that's really engaged in, in rural health, 
that that student can tap into the resources at the other HBCUs here in the state? Well, I mean, I think the program, and especially specifically for ours, our Titan program, where we are having a two specialized areas in education, as Claflin being one of the first education programs in the state of South Carolina, and known for that work, and um, our work through Call Me Mister and getting our students connected, but also too through nursing, as we've seen with COVID, the, the, the massive need for a nursing shortage. But if you extrapolate that data, African-American nurses and the need for that as well. And we're excited about our program with uh, those two areas that allows us to be able to be change agents in our community and to provide more diverse teachers in our school districts um, that begin to have quality training uh, as well. So we're excited about the partnership um, and we're excited about what it can do, again, as a model for the state of South Carolina for all of the HBCUs. So I believe HBCUs um, for the last 150 years has provided a pathway to success for many students who may not otherwise have gotten opportunities. And we know all of the stats of the percentages of doctors, lawyers, military officers, you name it, who have graduated from HBCUs. So despite our small numbers in South Carolina collectively being less than 10,000 students, we know that we continue to punch above our weight each and every day. And again, I'm thankful for the opportunity that all eight HBCUs in South Carolina will work together for the greater good because we know that a rising tide floats all boats. It's a great opportunity and I will say to you, come join us, let's make it happen.